My name is Larry Hawkins, and I'm Director of Technical Marketing and Systems at Richardson RFPD. I'm with Luke Anderson from NextGen RF, and our demo today is of the BitPipe RF transceiver with FPGA SOM and Radio Carbon Design Accelerators. The BitePipe is a 30 MHz to 6 GHz RF transceiver with FPGA system on module that uses an analog device's ADRV9002 and Xilinx XCU3EG. It supports most of the functionality of the ADRV9002, including DPD, fast frequency hopping, instantaneous bandwidths of 12 kHz to 40 MHz, etc., and will greatly reduce engineering time and costs of implementing the ADRV9002 and FPGA into a design. Richardson RFPD's radiocarbon design accelerators consists of three designs, covering frequency ranges from 1.35 to 2.7 GHz and 4.4 to 5 GHz. They include a full RF front end, transmit and receive, that can be used in TDD or FDD modes. Output powers are 40 watts or 20 watts PSAT and 2 watts or 1 watt linear, assuming a 10 dB peak to average signal. The boards can be used with any transceiver that has DPD through SMA connectors, but was designed specifically to work with the Byte Pipe SOM and ADRV9002 eval board. We believe that customers working on military communications, SATCOM, TROPOSCATTER, non line of sight backhaul and 5G applications should be particularly interested in these boards, although they can be modified to work in other frequency bands. The specific radiocarbon board used in this demonstration is the FEA 445040, a 4.4 to 5 GHz RF front end design accelerator. The transmit has about 35 dB of gain and a 40 watt PSAT or 2 watt linear at the antenna, assuming a 10 dB peak to average signal. The receive has 24 dB max gain and a 1.75 dB system noise figure, but the second stage LNA can be bypassed if there's a jammer. Included is a picture of the board being tested. You'll note that the bit pipe SOM can be mounted directly on the radiocarbon board. However, if a different transceiver board were used, the bit pipe would not be installed and the transceiver board would be connected via the SMA connectors. The bit pipe is only 37 by 61 millimeters, so it's very small. And overall, the whole board is small, especially considering there are no components on the back side. We've just received the FEA 445040 boards in the lab and are showing early data in this demo. Luke Anderson with NextGen RF will show some of the data we've collected. We'll begin the performance aspect of this demonstration by looking at the transmitter and the digital pre-distortion capabilities of the FEA 445040 with byte pipe SOM. To demonstrate the digital pre-distortion capabilities, the analog device's TESS software was utilized for configuration. A waveform file provided by analog devices was loaded into the FPGA with a 15.36 meg data rate, which created a 10 megahertz bandwidth signal. For this demonstration, the transmit and RX2 ports were utilized with a carrier frequency set at 4.75 gigahertz.
Shown here is a spectrum analyzer capture of the transmit output power with and without digital pre-distortion being implemented. It's seen with approximately 2 watts of output power, there is more than 20 dB of out-of-band emission reduction. We will now look at the receiver architecture. Signals that come into the antenna go through a circulator, which is used for isolation from the transmitter. The receiver, receiver lineup consists of two Gorilla LNAs. The second LNA contains a bypass when large signals are present and not as much gain is needed. The front end also has the capability of utilizing a voltage tunable bandpass filter, which will be covered later in the demonstration. Shown here are some general performance aspects of the receiver front end, including measured IP3, gain, and the tunable bandpass filter response. In the upper left, the IP3 was measured using two tones that were 50 megahertz apart, centered at 4.75 gigahertz. The IP3 was then calculated by measuring the delta between the tones in the mixed products that they generate. The gain was measured using a network analyzer and is shown in the plot on the lower right corner. The gain across the band from 4.4 to 5 gigahertz is flat and comes in just under 24 dB at 4.75 gigahertz. In the center is the response shown of the tunable filter with the network analyzer. To tune across the band from 4.4 to 5 gigahertz, the voltage needs to be driven between 5 and 7.5 and volts. Thank you for joining our virtual demo. We look forward to sharing more information with you as we make these boards available. If you'd like to learn more, please visit us at richardsonrfpd.com.